So, you want to make this. Well, step one, go ahead and go to the grocery store, grab a little bit of flour, grab some baking soda, and let's make a miracle. Hey guys, one bad touch by Kai. I'm Kai, and today we are back once again taking a look at uh, how to make this particular uh, intro kind of animation that I've just created, which I absolutely love to death. One of my favorite things in the world. Um, I just want to give it a breakdown, a really quick breakdown, just so you guys can see how I made it. Um, it's not like super difficult, so I don't think it really garners like a full, hey, break, let me, every single tutorial, watch me do it while I do it. I just wanted to break it down for you guys, so you guys can see uh, kind of the behind the scenes of what uh, of what went on into making this. So, I'm going to go ahead and uh, split my window into two here. I'm just going to go to the, uh, the shader editor here. Now, what I'm going to do is, basically the scene is set up like this. So, there is... A, uh, a, 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 a plane that I have essentially modeled, which is this R, um, which is my logo. We're going to go ahead and take this. You see, it's it's actually an object. It's not an image. It is an object. It has vertices and everything. I actually modeled this. I traced the image with just a single vertice and traced it all the way around, just duplicated them and whatnot. Um, and then I gave that a material. This material is um, a white material with uh, some lines that go through it, which is very cool. And I'll explain how I did this in a second. It's actually way easier than you probably think that it is so we'll go ahead and go back to rendered and then of course behind this we have a plane and this plane has the same exact um sort of thing going on in the background on top of it as you can see um you can see that there is uh, that same kind of animation on the plane as well which just looks really really cool i love it to death so the plane is more complex because it has double but the um the logo itself let's go ahead and hide the background so the logo itself is super easy the animation on it as you can see um, it's just these nodes right here these are all the nodes that I used so essentially what I did was I um, I gave this material a, uh, a a couple different things so I added an ad shader which is of course everything that I'm gonna have here is just shift a and then hit the search button and then search for whatever it says at the top so emission um, you would search you would search color ramp musgrave texture my phone's going off uh, ad shader you know whatever it is mapping texture coordinate just search that so shift a search and then texture coordinate and you can just boom pop it right there all right cool so now that we have that out the way i searched for an ad shader and i plugged that into the surface of the material output um and uh let's just go ahead and break this down a little bit more so what i did was basically i had this color ramp here um this color ramp has three colors in it so it has two white colors and then one color in the center now this color in the center is the line so if i didn't have a second white color you can see that it would just look like this it was like this, where there's like just a, a giant splotch of color, which looks very cool as well, but I wanted like a line kind of effect. Um, so you can see it's like a big ball of color. Like, I really like that too. It looks cool, but I really wanted a line. So to do that, what I did was I made sure this was on constant instead of ease because that would make it soft like that, which I don't want. So I made sure it was on constant and hit this little plus button again, added a white color, and then just moved it over here and created a line. Now, the closer I put the white line to the colored line, you can see the thinner the line will get. Put it on like a red color so you can see it easier. Um, the thinner it will get, the further away you put it, the thicker it will get. So I had it about right there, I think, I believe. Let me just undo it until it goes back. Um, there we go. And as you can see, when it plays, it looks as if there's a line. When in, uh, Essentially, it's just two white colors that are bordering the pink color, which, by the way, is animated. So I selected this little uh, piece here in the center and then hovered my cursor over top of the color box and then just changed the hit I, hit I on my uh, keyboard. To insert a keyframe and then just change to a different uh, a different place in the timeline. Hover my cursor, change the color. Hover my cursor over top of this and hit I again. So then I added some more color, so it changes color throughout the throughout the scene. Obviously, as you can see, very very cool stuff. I plugged that into an emission shader, which is set to one, and then I plugged this into the uh, add shader, which by the way we don't even need. So I'll take that away. That was something I was doing earlier. So pretty much I just had an emission shader. Uh, and the color ramp is plugged into the emission shader, which is plugged into the material output. We don't need any of those two. That was for something else I was doing earlier. I had that as a different setup, and I forgot to remove them. My apologies. All right. So now after we have that, we have a musgrave texture, which is just shift A, musgrave, of course, right there. Um, this height is plugged into the factor. I have the scale on 1.5 because um, you can see it, so it changes the scale like that, and then we play it looks like that, which that looks cool, but not for this. Um, so 1.5, 2, 1.3, 2 is just super easy. Musgrave texture just makes it look nice. This is like the actual lines and style that you're seeing. And so that I can move them and have them move around like they are. I had, had to add a mapping node, but because the mapping node doesn't work with a texture coordinate node, I had to add a text, texture coordinate node as well. So these last two, I had to have these together or else they don't work. So I plugged the generated into the vector of the mapping and then plugged the mapping into the vector of the Musgrave. 
Now, what I did was I animated the uh, the X value. As you can see, the X value is being animated here on frame zero. It is zero, and then on this frame right here, uh, this is la on the sorry, on the last frame, it is one. Uh, 360 so I rotated on the x-axis by 360 degrees which made it fully loop as you can see it starts and stops at the same place that loops the little black line that goes through it loops but it also moves throughout the duration of the scene I have 2,000 frames by the way um, and I did the same thing with the background the background is the same exact way if I go ahead and unhide it the background is the same exact thing the only difference is is that I've changed the colors obviously so this color instead of it changing colors it's just that solid gray color the entire time as you can see, the background, that little gray line that going through, a very thin gray line. And then at the top up here, I have the same exact setup, same exact thing, um, except I... Actually, do I need this? Oh, do I need that? No, yeah, yeah, we don't need that at all. Um, all right, cool, cool, cool. Um, yeah, okay, so, I, so the, I have the same exact setup up here at the top, as you can see. Same exact thing, copy, paste. I just I added an ad shader so I can mix them together because we have two different things here. And then the second one... Of course, this second one also changes color up here. As you can see, this line is changing color. Um, and the instead of it being white, I just made these black. So it's basically the same thing as the letter R. It's just instead of these being white, it is black, as you can see. So same thing, different values for the rotation. So it doesn't go in the same exact line. Um, for this, I, I changed the Y to from zero, uh, from zero to negative 360. And then this one down here is 50. 20 and then 0 to 360 all the way through um, That's for the gray line the one for, down, down here. This is for the gray line. This is for the colored line on the background cool That's basically all that I did literally. That's all it is. It's so easy It's so much more simple than you think that it is and the last thing that I did was I went into the cameras view and then I selected the R and then I actually made some changes to the motion so it moves a little bit it rotates slightly, by the way, it rotates a little tiny bit, but not even enough to really notice. But what it, what I did was I went to the graph editor, I opened up the right-hand side panel, went to modifiers, and then I have a noise on on the uh, on the plan, on the R, on the R logo. So I have a noise on that. So basically just add modifier, noise, and then I have the scale on 100, and the strength, and the, the offset uh, changes depending on if it is the X location, the Y location, or the Z location. And then this, that same exact thing for all three of these right here, the X, Y, and Z. And then uh, that's basically that all that is. So now the R very slightly moves, as you can see. Um, so that is it. That is really literally it. And I love this so, so much um, as a, like an intro, like a stream intro or a video intro. Love it very much. Very, very cool. One of, the, one of my favorite things that I've done in a long time, actually. So hope you guys felt the same way. Um, very, very, very simple. I love this so much, but I hope you guys love it as much as I do. Um, I will see you in the next one, but until then, bye-bye.